Google. He's a cloud advocate, and he's going to talk to us today about some GitHub events. Thanks. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you have lunch? Do you have an app? No. <laughs> me neither. But hello, I'm Felipe Hoffa. I'm super happy to be here. No? I will speak louder. <laughs> It works better when you turn on the microphone. <laughs> true, true story. Uh, so I'm Felipe Hoffa. Uh, I work for Google Cloud. I'm Chilean. Have you been to South America? Yes? Oh, so, so many. This is my first time in South Africa. In all of Africa, it's my first time here. So you have not missed any of my talks. That was <laughs> his joke. Um, so today I'm going to talk about analyzing GitHub, analyzing open source. Everyone here knows GitHub? Yes, OK. Ever, anyone is, has analyzed GitHub? The whole of it? <laughs> Ooh, everything. Well, we, we, are going to, we are going to go there now. So let's get started. What do you see here? Hmm? Code, TensorFlow, GitHub. A slide. So, so what I see here is other than code, I, see, I can see things that are being imported. I see a license. I see a year. I see things from the future. Um, yeah, the, from, from future import. Uh, if you go back, you can find uh, more metadata, number of followers, number of forks, number of stars, who has contributed. Uh, for me, all of this is data, and very big, big data. <laughs> Th there's a lot we can analyze here. Thank you. And, oh. and the, the question is, who wants to analyze this? Uh, there's a lot of people. Um, first, project maintainers, project owners. Uh, they want to know how popular the project is, who is following them, how to manage change, uh, is, if the project is healthy. Um, Monty last night at the speaker's dinner was asking me all of these questions for MariaDB. So uh, using these tools, he can do this. Uh, we do the same at Google. Everyone that owns a huge project is listening, is able to measure these things. Uh, project users, if you use a project, you want to know also the same things. But you want to know how to request features, how to make uh, good requests that will be acted upon. Uh, what other projects you could be missing on. And before you become a project user, you are a project chooser. You have to choose a project. Uh, which one will you choose? If you are choosing a JavaScript library, there are hundreds of them. Which one is healthier? Which one is more active? Which one is, is the best one for you? And if you love data, this is a great place to just find a lot of real data and get inside and start querying it. Yes. We are going to look at three main data sets. Uh, there's a lot of data that we can use. Uh, the three I'm going to focus on today is GitHub Archive. It's an uh, archive of all events happening on GitHub, minute by minute, hour by hour. GH Torrent, uh, this one goes further into the graph and also uh, brings us more information from GitHub. And also the GitHub repositories on BigQuery. This is where we have a copy of all the open source code that we can find on GitHub. Um, yeah, yeah, before I get started on how, uh, anyone knows what are the top companies contributing to open source on GitHub? Oh, you all read the same article. <laughs> I know, there was a 2016 article that basically was counting the number of users, and we had a discussion about that, and I made a new chart, and this is the chart that I got. Uh -huh. So yes, Microsoft is up there, huge, but it's Google is also there. And <laughs> thank you. And the huge difference here is that I'm counting in more than one dimension. The three dimensions that you can see here are, on this hand, the number of users on GitHub that I could identify as belonging as any corporation. Microsoft is the one with the most, the more number of users. But on this other dimension, I'm looking at the number of projects these users are contributing to. And the size of these circles is the number of stars these projects are getting. Aha, uh -huh. 
what's the impact? What, how are you reacting to them? So yes, both companies are doing pretty well. I don't want to compete. You can guess which one is better, but... <laughs> but, but they are up, to, up there, and there's a lot of other companies that are also doing a lot, some more than others, but it's really, really interesting to be able to see this data and to count it. And if you don't like the results that I got, you can go run this query and tell me if I did it right or wrong. So far, no one ha has contested my results, but this is the awesome part. You can uh, give new findings, you can share new results, and the world can go and look at the same data that you're looking. But before we get to those complicated queries, let's start back in 2012 when we didn't have these data sets available. And my teammate, Ilya Grigoric, he started collecting all of these events from GitHub. He called it GitHub Archive, and he left files who, which you could download at any time. So for example, if you want to get one hour of events from GitHub, you just do a wget, a curl request, uh, five megabytes of data, less than a second. You can decompress it. That's like 30 megabytes of data per hour. That's super easy. Just download it, point it in a local database, get your results. At this rate, if you want to get seven years of data, that's a lot more data. Uh, at this rate, seven years would be 2.39 terabytes of data, more than one billion events. And you might be able to download all of this, but then what do you do? Where do you put this data? How do you analyze it? What's your answer? So at the same time that Ilya was getting ready to share this, we were getting also ready to share at Google uh, BigQuery, one of my favorite products. Uh, who knows BigQuery? Wow, so many hands. Great. For those that still don't know BigQuery but are about to meet it right now, uh, it's our data warehouse tool that it's always on. There's nothing to turn on. It's just there waiting for your data. You can use it with SQL. It scales. It analyzes terabytes in seconds. You can connect it to R, Python, Data Studio, whatever your favorite tools are. And then even if I can have very private data, I, I'm also able to share it. So Ilya was able to load all of these tables into BigQuery, and now everyone can load BigQuery and can query these tables. Not only that, everyone every month has a free terabyte of queries to just run the queries that I'm going to run now. So if you don't trust any of my results, open your notebook, load BigQuery, and run the same queries that I'm doing, I'm doing here for free. So now let's look at the stars. Which stars am I talking about? GitHub stars, exactly. <laughs> so everyone wants to know who, what are the top projects by number of stars. You will see rankings. Uh, but it's really cool to run your own rankings. So let me do that live. So here I have BigQuery. I have the web UI. It's loaded. Um, can I use this microphone? OK, I will do everything with one hand until this one works. So I can look for, for all the data sets that are available. I have some that are private, some are open. This one is GitHub Archive. It's open. It's up to date. I will look at 2017. And I will, let me use standard SQL. Query table. OK. Five options. works now. Thank you, AV people. So let me search for the account star of every time that someone, the event was of the type uh, watch event. That's a star happening on GitHub. How many stars were given in 2017? Just a guess. Well, this thing goes, processes five gigabytes of data. We had 32 million stars. For which projects? Good question. Uh, Repo.name. Everyone knows um, SQL here? I will group by one, order by the number of stars. Group by two, order by the number of stars. Limit hours, order by one descending order. 
And this is how we can find what were the top projects on GitHub during last year. And the winner is Free Code Camp, followed by TensorFlow, Vue.js, Facebook React, uh, what every programmer should know. Um, anyone knows Free Code Camp? Yes, Free Code Camp is a pretty good resource to learn how to code. And the first step when you are learning how to code that they have is one, create a GitHub account. Two, star free code camp. <laughs> and it's working for them. It's working. They, they stopped doing that, but yes, they are getting a lot of stars that way. Um, so yeah, this is pretty interesting. We have results. Now, always, 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 when we are analyzing data, we have to be a little suspicious of it. We can't just uh, get some numbers and think like, oh, this is it. In fact, um, this is an event database. So for example, let's go to MariaDB. You are going to get a talk on this very soon. Uh, let's star MariaDB. And now let's remove the star and star it again. And remove the star, star again, remove the star. This is generating a lot of events. So the way to just to get the real number of stars is you want to count, for example, the distinct number of people that gave it stars. I can only count once. And of course, the results will be different. And there are projects where which most stars are fake stars. But that's not a problem for us anymore because we know how to count the real number of stars. And what did I do wrong? I have to group by three. I will order by this one. And again, um, with BigQuery, you can just show up here, ask any question, and start refining it. And you will get the results in seconds. Oh, let's not wait for this, because <laughs> <laughs> ah, I, I have screenshots of everything. So 2016 compared to 2017. Um, okay, I got the results already. Yeah. Uh, yes, if you look at Free Code Camp, there are like 5,000 duplicate stars. Uh, TensorFlow also has some duplicate. So yeah, let's look at the real number. Never trust the first result to you have. Are all stars equal? Do you just count the number of stars and that's it? No, not all stars are equal. Um, let, ah, let me run this way. I love running queries. If we run out of time, then I will just go through screenshots. But for example, when I start a project, it's different than when you start a project, when you start a project, because everyone has a different storyline. Uh, we live in different countries, we have different interests. You might prefer Java, I might prefer Python. Um, I might be new to GitHub, and it's really interesting to be able to see that data. In this case, um, this is for 2016, Free Code Camp got a lot more stars than TensorFlow in 2016. But you can see that the age of the users with TensorFlow is double the age of with Free Code Camp. Which makes sense. Free code camp is for new users. Now, how do I calculate the age? I don't know the age of each user. But what I do know is when they joined GitHub. So that's age for me. Um, people that start TensorFlow start like eight times more repository, eight, eight times more repositories than the other one. They were present on more issue. They were doing more pull requests. So you can see how maturity changes per, per project. Uh, what's the real ranking that you want? It all depends to who you are talking to. Um, again, we go here back to free. What did I do? Uh, yeah. um, if we compare TensorFlow versus Free Code Camp in 2016, the number of stars that each one got, it's, uh, there's a pretty big gap. But if you only look at users that ha were active on GitHub, that gave this project at least, any project, at least 20 comments. Um, Free Code Camp has way less mature users than the number that we count before, and TensorFlow is way closer. Again, you are able to run your own rankings and measure the popularity in the way that more suits, suits your needs. Um, again, the ranking changes if we filter only for mature users in this way. Yarn is the top project in 2016, things go down, things go up. Um, feel free to question all of these results. Now, when you start a project, you have also started a lot of other projects, and you might be wondering, oh, I have 5,000 stars. What else have people started? 
So you can write a query like this. Take everyone that started my project, look at all of their other projects they start. And for example, with TensorFlow, um, these are the other projects that other people have, that the same people that start TensorFlow start to. And wow, suddenly all of these other machine learning projects show up. And th this defines a graph that may be super interesting to traverse and learn about other related projects. And they're related just by what my, the people watching me are interested in. Now, this is a very simple ranking. I'm ranking it by uh, just counting the number of stars that they gave to other projects. But you might want to normalize it by how many other stars the other projects got. So for example, if I change it uh, by probability, um, these are the projects that are the most related to TensorFlow. And you have the TensorFlow in Chinese, Teano, Torch, Cafe, uh, the ranking changes. I also ran this query earlier for, for Monty. These are the MariaDB, whoever started MariaDB, where else they started, start, and of course, MySQL Server, Postgres, MongoDB, and Nginx, RocksDB, PHP. It all makes sense, and then you can start discovering a lot of these projects. When, when people, can you hear me, or it depends if I'm close or not? It changes a lot if I do this. Okay. Um, uh -huh. When people give stars, there is a timeline. Uh, people don't give stars all, all every day. You, you don't get a uniform rate of stars. This is, for example, the top uh, Apache projects, how many stars they get. Some are very stable. Some get stars uh, that jump on any day. Uh, here, for example, I'm comparing Flink versus Arrow. Flink had a very stable 2017. Arrow had a lot of stars every time that Wes McKinney wrote a blog post. And you might be wondering, exactly. Um, every time that happens, you might wonder, how did people find you? Uh, one source, for example, is here I have the number of stars of these projects. And the annotations are every time that this project showed up on Hacker News. Boop. People get interested in your project if you feature your project there. And what's interesting is that these annotations I didn't add, I were not added manually, uh, because I also have hack, all of Hacker News in BigQuery. So I was able to run a join like this and find every time that a project shows up on Hacker News, it gets a lot. It gets a lot of stars. So if you have uh, your own project, you want to make it popular, put it on Hacker News, make it popular, and a lot of people will notice. Mm -hmm. um, project health. Project health. Are, is my, are my projects healthy? Uh, this, for example, are uh, during June 2016. These are the projects that got the most number of comments on issues. On top, Kubernetes. Yes, I'm proud. Uh, followed by Spark, uh, OpenShift, and a project called Sauron Demo. Who knows Sauron Demo? Again, always question the results that you get. In this case, the problem is that these four, uh, almost 5,000 comments on Sauron Demos were given by one user, a robot. <laughs> it happens. So, you don't want to just start, start, uh, count. You may want to normalize it by how many people were giving comments. Again, this is a new ranking. And in this ranking, I'm looking at, you can see that Kubernetes had around 500 authors. And if you divide the number of comments by the number of authors, you get that each one was, during this month, wrote around 18 comments. That's huge. That's a lot of participation. That's a very healthy community. On the other extreme, Font Awesome had even more people commenting, more than 600. But each one left less than two comments. So it's something that people go, they write a comment, they never come back again. And this is how you can find what are the most popular communities. And I'm pretty uh, proud that, uh, that Google shows up with Kubernetes, with TensorFlow, with Angular, pa 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 pa. And there are also other cool companies there. Um, Monty might want to know this. Which one is, has a healthier community, MySQL or Maria? These are the results. Uh, MariaDB server has a lot more comments per authors, a lot more authors, and a lot more comments than uh, just MySQL server. So MariaDB is, has a healthier community, which is cool. 
then you might be wondering what about PostgreSQL? Which one is more mature? Which one has a healthier community? Postgres is on, on the bottom. Oh, why? Why, 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 why? Oh, that's because I'm only measuring things on GitHub. And Postgres doesn't run their forums on GitHub. So, uh, again, my message to you, what I want you to uh, think about and act on, is that if you are not on GitHub, or if you don't show up on Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow or you don't show up on Hacker News, um, it's way harder to measure you. And project owners, uh, people that want to know who you are, they want to know what you're interested in, and you can vote just by creating a GitHub account, starring projects, uh, participating on these communities. And I make it easy for the project owners to realize that you're doing that. Uh, let's run some text analysis, since you are talking about issues. What are the most common ways to start an issue on GitHub? These are my results. <laughs> People really like starting their issues by, it would be nice. <laughs> Is it possible to? I would like to. People on GitHub are nice. But if you look at the last column, how many of these issues get closed? If you start with, it would be nice, 56%. Versus, is it possible to? 73%. And the best way to get your issues closed is to say, I get the following. Being concrete gets you 86% of closure. The more concrete, the, the best you are at explaining what you have and what you want, uh, the better uh, responses you will get. Remember this. Um, let's talk a little bit about countries. Where are people coming from? Um, what are the top countries on GitHub? Any guess? Hmm? China? South Africa? <laughs> let's see. Uh, <laughs> of course, a lot of people don't put their country, so no. But next comes the United States, India, China, Great Britain. Of course, these are the biggest countries too, but the la some, of have a, some of the largest populations online. But uh, you might want to look for activity of users. This is just by the number of pushes during this month. But you might want to see it. Okay, let's make a, uh, a different ranking. Let's look at this per capita. And the greenest one, the top concentration is up there on those countries. And Africa is below average, except South Africa there. But we can go deeper into these numbers. Um, so you can see here the, the top countries are Iceland, Sweden, Norway, and New Zealand, Denmark, uh, mostly cold countries. <laughs> <laughs> yes. In fact, when, if you want to know, do coders prefer colder countries, hot, warmer countries? You can go and find. Uh, all of, the, all of the worldwide weather, all of the stations are reporting weather day by day, and I'm storing all of that in BigQuery. You can go analyze it, get the average, uh, filter it out, and yes, those, the countries there are the coldest, the countries here are the hottest. Africa is super warm, it's on this side, and you can merge both sides and you can get a chart like this. Uh, where is South Africa? There. Uh, yes, uh, South Africa is above average in the um, concentration of coders, but the rest of Africa, at least when I run this query, shows uh, with less concentration as, and way warmer. An exception there on top is Singapore, that's super hot, but also has a large concentration of coders. Now, are these numbers real or not? Um, how, are we, how am I counting this? It all depends on how um, trustable my data is. And the only people that will show up here are people that are active on GitHub, that have created their profile, and that have written on their profile, hey, I'm in this country. Otherwise, I cannot know. Otherwise, uh, we cannot count you. And so create an account. Be active. Uh, be proud of the country you live in, and the numbers will reflect uh, the reality. Because it's not only the number of developers, it's also uh, the culture. Are you participating or not? So, for example, to count the number of developers per country on GitHub in Africa during last year, these were my top seven countries. South Africa is on top, 
Egypt, Nigeria, Kenya, Morocco, Tunisia, Ghana. Does it make sense? Right? The number of followers, the users that I found, that's the number of stars that each country gave. And what South Africa shows there is that people here give a lower number of stars in average than the other countries. Just put more stars on projects. <laughs> show, show that you're interested. <laughs> people really value it. Um, I can do the same with the Stack Overflow. And with the Stack Overflow, I get similar results. So at least looking at two different databases, I, I can see that, yes, my results kind of make sense. Again, be active on Stack Overflow. Uh, this is the growth on Stack Overflow during the, uh, the last year. Uh, South Africa got 27% more active people uh, versus Ethiopia that doesn't show up with a lot of users. We had a growth of 100%. But yes, at least in every country, the usage is growing. Just go to Stack Overflow, look post questions, post answers. Uh, people complain a lot that there's nothing to answer, like finding a question that I can answer is hard. But I'm sure some days you don't find the answer you want, you want to find on Stack Overflow, and you solve it anyways. Uh, what you can do then is you can post the question and then the answer. <laughs> Stack Overflow loves when you do that. And again, you are sharing and you're showing up on the map that I'm building here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about code. Where is all of this code that we'll be talking about? Uh, we announced this uh, a couple of years ago, 2016. Um, and you can go and find this table also in BigQuery. This is a snapshot that I took a while ago. Uh, we have more than two terabytes of data now, more than 200 million files. Um, the table basically has each file. You can find the size, you can find the content of each file, and the number of copies. We only store each unique file once. And then if you multiply the size by the number of copies and you add that, you can, we'll find that we have more than 40, 50 terabytes of code that you can open up, run a query, analyze. Uh, rules when you are analyze, analyzing this is that uh, first, there's a lot of files. Um, if you join it with the table that has all of the names each file has, uh, if you run that join and you try to materialize that table, you will end up with a lot of code, 46 terabytes of code. So don't do that. Stay with the two terabyte table. And then instead of querying the two terabyte table every time, just extract what you're looking for. You want to analyze all of Java, all of Python, all of 2016 code, extract that first, and then run your queries over that. And I have been running all of these extracts. I left you a sample, a table with 10% of cons of contents for the top projects with one sample path, start there instead of with the two terabyte table. Um, and we can only find here open source projects. Open source, as, as they must have uh, an open source license that the GitHub license API can detect. So if your project is missing, it might be because it's missing uh, an open source detectable license. And then you can start running uh, running SQL queries over these files. Um, for example, Java. If I split each file, each line, and I look at the ones that start with import, and I start counting, and I look at 2013 and 2016, these are the imports that have grown the most. And you can find that one of these projects is uh, their Mokito, for example. People are testing more with Mokito. Um, Inject is also one, one of the... Uh, important have the most growth. And you can go and start digging, digging deeper in different languages. Um, you can also go and find, for example, on GitHub, or sorry, on, on all of this code, you can find when people are linking to Stack Overflow. So you copy some code, you put the link to Stack Overflow to tell your teammates that that's where you got your code from. Uh, it's a query like this. And again, these are the results. Um, is there a regular expression escape function in JavaScript? Uh, how to get an absolute URL? Uh, you can also look at the number of views these questions have on Stack Overflow. Um, how to convert decimal to X in JavaScript? Uh, that one has a lot of views, and you can see that, yeah, people are linking from the code to Stack Overflow. And then you might have the opposite question, as Sebastian had. 
How many people are copying code from Stack Overflow to GitHub? <laughs> Anyone here? No? Well, <laughs> Sebastian had that question, and he wanted to find an answer. So he went to one of the top Stack Overflow questions, how to convert byte size into human readable format in Java. Has a lot of views, a lot of upvotes, and that's the top answer. Now, if you want to search this in text files, it's not easy because people change the name of variables, they change the notation, they change the spaces to tabs, whatever, so it's not direct. What did he do? What would you do? He transformed it into a regular expression. <laughs> it's not pretty, but it works. So with this regular expression, he went back to BigQuery. BigQuery will happily run regular expressions. And he found uh, at least like 500 matches. Only a fourth of them gave any credits. And they did look like a copy of the Stack Overflow answer. So please, when you copy code from Stack Overflow, give credits. Or Sebastian will find you. <laughs> oh, yes. How do you request new features uh, when you want a project to act on your desires? How do you act? What's the best way to ask for something? I get the following, or it would be nice. Not only that, you can use data. So for example, this guy was asking for the Go language. I would like to propose, so he started nicely. And he wanted to have instead of, to write instead of time sub, sorry, after expiration, time sub, time now, he wanted to write after time until. Nice request, but should the Go team follow up on this or not? Should they approve or accept, uh, should they accept this request? So my, at, the mo at the time, teammate Francesc ran this query, analyzing all of the Go code he could find, and he found at least 2,000 repositories that would benefit from this feature. And then the Go team went and implemented this feature. So now it's available for all of you. Same thing when someone went and asked, hey, TLS config is not consistent. Sometimes you will use all caps, sometimes not. Could you make it consistent? Frances came back, ran this query, and found that 700 repositories would be broken if, people, if they fixed this. So they didn't fix it. <laughs> Good. So, and now the method, again, here, when you put code on GitHub, you are voting. You are voting with your code. You don't need to do anything else other than put it there. And people will be able to analyze it. People will be able to see what you need, how you're using their libraries. And that's all you need to do, participate. So remember that. You can go beyond regular expressions. Uh, so for example, how do we run static code analysis over all of this code? I found a library on, on GitHub that's called JS Hint, runs static code analysis over JavaScript. And the good news is that BigQuery also runs JavaScript. In the middle of your SQL queries, you can run any arbitrary code. And you are able also to run static code analysis. This is a query with JavaScript in the middle of it. And these are the results I got for the top warnings, like uh, missing semicolons, when you expected A and instead saw B, blocks are nested too deeply, blah, blah, blah. You can go way, way deeper with your analysis and run any arbitrary code that you want to run. So let's get to the important questions. <laughs> Spaces or tab? Spaces? Tabs? OK, these were my results among the top 14 languages. These were the rules. You always have to define your rules, how you're going to analyze. And this was my query extracting these files. Then I ran the query that I wanted to run. And the results are this. Spaces win. That's what I got. Most languages use spaces. If you really like tabs, you can go to Go. <laughs> you, you have no choice there. If you don't like tabs, if you like spaces and nothing else, Ruby is all about spaces. C is 50-50, but spaces are winning. I'm sorry. Um, some people are doing other stuff that's also pretty useful, like finding bugs. Uh, this was when the 
a team at Google found the Matt gadget bug and found that it was present in a lot of projects. So they loaded this on BigQuery. They found all the projects that were open to this vulnerability, and they sent pull requests to everyone. And that was super, super cool. Put your code on GitHub, get automatic fixes. <laughs> and another important question for those that write SQL. Where do you put your commas? At the end or the beginning? End? End? Beginning? But that's ugly. <laughs> OK, I, I put my commas at the beginning, too. Why? Because most modern languages will allow you to leave a comma at the end. After city, you can put a comma, and no one complains, and it, looks, it works well. But if you do that with SQL, uh, it fails, your query doesn't run, and it drives you crazy, so you end up putting all your commas at the beginning if you are spending enough time with SQL. And that's what I did. And then I wanted to prove to everyone that that was the right thing to do. So I went, I counted the number of lines, and okay, I didn't put a nice chart here, but it turns out that way more people put their commas at the end. <laughs> yeah, so I, I could run a survey and it's exactly what I got. But then the, the real question is, what projects are more successful? <laughs> yes. So how do you define success first? Number of stars, the number of stars last year, how many contributors, how much activity. So I took all of these projects, I ran my numbers, I ran my query, and these were the results. Projects that allow you to put the commas at the start are double as successful as other projects. <laughs> so I win, or not. You can run the same queries, and you can debate with data uh, what I did here. So yes, it's your turn. Um, I want you to stay curious. Please challenge any results, any numbers that I, got you to, I gave you today. Challenge them. Not everything might be right. I would be super happy to see your results. And show up. Show up on GitHub, show up on Stack, Over Stack Overflow, tweet, uh, write blogs, what you, what you have been doing, etc. So who wants to analyze GitHub? I hope all of you also. GitHub analyzes GitHub with BigQuery. I have this video with Alison Lather, data scientist, uh, project maintainers, user choosers, and I hope you want to do this. And if you write blogs, if you do any interesting analysis, put it online. I really want to see it. I collect them. There's a lot of people doing interesting stuff and sharing data. And with this, I open up for questions if we have time, and thank you very much. <laughs> 10 minutes for questions. I can wait here. We have 10 minutes. So I've got to treat you as a proxy for Google. So it's a random question. Any chance you guys are going to open source Colossus at any point? Oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Saying I was going to treat you like a proxy for Google. So not directly related, but uh, with big query and so forth. Any chance you're going to open source or release white papers on Colossus? Colossus. So Colossus is a different... So the file system underpinning BigQuery and so on. Yeah, so BigQuery runs on Google on a stack of different technologies. Colossus is one of them. Uh, Spanner is another. Um, most of our technologies we have published as papers. Um, a lot of people have implemented those papers. So for example, BigQuery has several open source implementations. For example, one is... Uh, from Facebook, Presto. Uh, they all implemented the Dremel paper. But uh, other than publishing papers, now we are sharing code, like Kubernetes, uh, Beam. And we share also services, like BigQuery and all of that. Now, why do you exactly want Colossus? I'm not sure. But I would love to learn more. But yes, uh, we love sharing all, all everything that we've done. Are there a source code, papers, or products that you can just come and use? Who's next?
Do you want me to run any queries? I love running live queries. <laughs> it's risky. OK, the microphone is moving there. But. Hi. Hello. Um, you analyzed queries uh, based on number of comments. Did you analyze whether those comments were positive or negative? Uh, excellent question. Uh, are these comments uh, positive or negative? We've done some of that. Uh, there is an analysis, for example, of which uh, I, we could find this. It's, 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 it's a Google search away. Uh, what, in what languages people swear more. <laughs> you can find a lot of insults, and you can go and then uh, see where people are writing more insults. And we can do sentiment analysis, too. There are cool ways of running sentiment analysis, like uh, we have the, um, the text a uh, NLP API where we can analyze it and go through an API and get very advanced results. But we can also do it just by counting the number of smiles versus no, not smiles. Um, and I, I've done that with Stack Overflow. I've done that with GitHub, and it's pretty interesting to do. But I'm not sure. You want me to search for that? No, it's OK. We'll do it later. But yeah, that's an awesome question. And I really want to see what places are more effective. Something that I found on, on Stack Overflow is what communities uh, smile more or say thanks more. And it's amazing that it's very correlated on what communities have more women present. As, uh, fr communities get friendlier, get more smiles, get more thank you. Uh, and it's correlated somehow to uh, the diversity, which is also pretty interesting. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Um, this is probably not going to be a very popular question, but have you worked with any organizations that have used this data for monitoring the performance of their dev teams and, and, and the impact of that kind of uh, um, analysis? Yes. Has, has any organization used this data to monitor their teams? Um, their performance, yes. Um, I'll start with, I'll start very close with Google. I have a lot of uh, program managers that I've been talking to and we've been looking at these metrics to see how our projects are doing, how Kubernetes is doing, how TensorFlow, uh, Flutter. They all want to know how healthy, how things are working. And I'm not getting only these questions from uh, from Google, I'm getting them all over the place. And the goal here is that more people use it to measure not only the performance in code, which is super hard, how do you count the number of lines or what, but it's pretty interesting to see that if people are active, if the issues get closed, close, uh, and that, amount, that kind of health. Thanks. Um, yes. I was thinking more along the lines of individual developers in a team of 100 or 200. Like the, you know, how if, how effective an individual developer is as compared to um, his or her peers. Yes. So, how effective is this data to look at one team of two hundred people? Um, I haven't done that, but but I would love to find out more. Yeah. It sounds like something reasonable to do. If you again can define what are the measures of success, if you are just measuring number of lines of code, uh, it's hard. But uh, yeah, all organizations, in fact, I saw uh, Ken was doing that at Facebook. I would love to ask him how he was doing at Facebook and how we could do this at, on this data set. Thanks. Any more questions? One more. We have four minutes left. Uh, hi. Uh, Hello. I was wondering if it's possible to analyze uh, certain parts per given repository, what parts of code change frequently, uh, like hotspots. Because usually, in my experience, parts of code that change a lot is usually where like, there are a lot of bugs. Um, so I wonder. Is it possible to do that uh, uh, within the using those queries per repository? Like saying this file 
changed this many times. Yeah, so you want to find a hotspot of places inside the files that have changes or yeah. files that change a lot? Files that change a lot. Oh, yes, I would like uh, that pretty easy to do because we have all of the commit info so we can see the files that have been receiving a lot of changes and start analyzing them. Now, within a project, if you have your own project, that's pretty easy because you have all of that data available. You don't need to come all the way here to find that. But if you want to analyze it at the general level, so compare projects, then you can come here. But yes, uh, if it's for your own project, I'm sure you already have that data locally. The question is here, how, how do we make an interesting result from this? How do, can we get a result at the uh, bigger picture way? But it would be very interesting to, to find that out. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Time to close. Well, thank you very much. Leave me feedback there. Find me on Twitter, Stack Overflow, etc. Thanks, Philippe.